Whatever friendly feelings United States President Donald Trump might personally hold toward Moscow, the anti-Russian policy of his administration is even bolder than the core set in the last year of Barack Obama's presidency. This conclusion was articulated by Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, who expressed his dismay about the wave of Russophobic hysteria that, he said, had swept Washington Russian Council.ru, November 30th. Lavrov had shared that opinion before Michael Flynn, the former national security adviser in Trump's administration, pleaded guilty of lying to the Federal Bureau of Investigation FBI about his contacts with Russian officials and opted to cooperate with the investigation of special counsel Robert Mueller. This investigation is now expected to produce more evidence of Russia's interference in the U.S. presidential elections Gazeta.ru, November 30th. Stricter implementation of the law on sanctions is certain to follow, and Moscow is bracing for more punishment and preparing responses. The Russian economy can be maintained at its just above zero growth trajectory only if Moscow's agreement with the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries OPEC on production cuts is sustained, thus supporting the oil price on its current plateau Forbes.ru, November 30th. Greater worries in the business elite pertain to the personal sanctions aimed at oligarchs with close ties to the Kremlin, which allegedly are being investigated by U.S. Financial Intelligence with Alarming Prejudice Rosbalt, November 30th. Huge fortunes evacuated to Western havens by carry hidden channels are in danger, and even family members enjoying the good life in Monaco or Miami could feel the squeeze Nezavis Maya Gazeta, November 28th. It is well known in Russian business political circles that the U.S. State Department under Trump has not been particularly active in preparing new sanctions, so the news about the possible departure of Secretary of State Rex Tillerson brings more worries RBC, December 1st. Some experts suggest that, in this turbulent situation, Moscow could benefit from keeping a low profile and refraining from proactive moves on the international arena commerce and, December 1st, these cautious recommendations to wait out the political storms in Washington stand in sharp contrast with the escalation of the official rhetoric on preparation for a big war, Novaya Gazeta, November 29th. The tone was set by President Vladimir Putin, who held a series of meetings with the top brass and then demanded from big business greater readiness for a rapid expansion of defense-related production newsroo.com, November 28. In real terms, no return to the Soviet-style mobilization economy is planned or indeed possible RBC, November 28. The embarrassing failure of the space launch from the Nuva Stachny Cosmodroma reminded yet again about the degradation of Russia's military industry commerce and, November 29. Significant resources, nevertheless, are invested in building a top-heavy system of state command and control in a large-scale emergency New Times, November 27. The smoldering and malignantly mutating conflict in Don Bay remains the most probable epicenter of such emergency. Moscow has invested much effort in cultivating fatigue in the West with the deadlocked Minsk process Nezavismaya Gazeta, November 29. The firm statement from Kurt Volker, U.S. Special Representative for Ukraine Negotiations, regarding the non-negotiable proposition on restoration of Ukrainian control over all occupied territories came, therefore, as an irksome reminder to Moscow that its dirty little war was not forgotten in Washington RBC, November 28. The armed squabbles resulting in a military coup in the Luhansk quasi-republic revealed Moscow's inability to enforce any resemblance of order in the separatist enclaves Novaya Gazeta, November 24. It is in the Middle East that Russia tries to amass assets usable for bargaining with the U.S. and thus discouraging the introduction of really hard-hitting sanctions. Putin's plan for declaring victory and managing the talks between opposition groups of various persuasions in favor of the Bashar al-Assad regime was postponed CEDM, November 27, 29, so airstrikes with long-range 222M3 bombers were resumed Ria Novosti, December 1. Israel, meanwhile, is delivering its own airstrikes on the Hezbollah bases near Damascus, disregarding the deal on de-escalation zones, and the Russian foreign ministry no longer bothers to issue protestations newsru.com, December 2nd. It looks instead for opportunities to claim a key role in the management of the violent strife in Libya without any costly entanglement commerce and, December 2nd. The draft agreement with Egypt on access to its air bases could be used for making an occasional air raid targeting some Libyan groupings, which would hardly make any difference in the chaotic conflict but would demonstrate Russia's capacity for projecting power RBC, November 30th. This capacity is strikingly lacking in the most demanding and dangerous of conflict situations, which is driven by the North Korean nuclear and missile program CEDM, November 30th.
Russian experts are why aware that Pyongyang's proclaimed defensive goals can camouflage aggressive plans, which could produce a direct security threat to highly exposed Vladivostok Carnegie.ru, November 30th. Russian leadership cannot figure out how to interpret Trump's we will handle it statement, and Nikolai Petrushev, the secretary of the Security Council, sticks to the point that a military solution is unacceptable Ria Novosti, December 1st. The real point, however, is that the Kremlin would apparently love nothing better than to see U.S. pressure on North Korea, supported and reinforced by China, fail Russian Council.ru, November 29th. Moscow is ready to accept the de facto nuclear status of its obstinate totalitarian neighbor, but is upset about the cooperation between the United States and China, which leaves it marginalized in the Big East Asian game. Putin seemingly cannot quite grasp the nuances of decision-making in Beijing and may not why understand the complexity of Middle Eastern intrigues, but what he knows expertly and sees as the main driver of politics is corruption. He thought that, in the course of last year's U.S., presidential campaign he finally managed to connect with American political corruption, but that breakthrough has inflicted massive damage to Russia's international status and keeps backfiring. He cannot admit any wrongdoing or, even worse, mistakes, and can neither shelter his courtiers from escalating punishment nor give them compensation for the growing damage. The signaling to Washington of the readiness to be useful in managing high resonance conflicts is by and large ignored, and the subtle hints about making troubles are interpreted as threats. Putin can neither control nor counter the deterioration of relations with the U.S., and this makes anti-Americanism a less useful tool in domestic politics. By the Jamestown Foundation More top reads from oilprice.com